Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Chrissy Tania from Glace and we are at the second how-to series with Thermomix Australia. Today we're going to make the ever-popular Black Forest cake. For some of us, the chance to gather together nowadays would be outdoor during picnic, be it birthdays or be it any celebration. So today we're going to make a different take of Black Forest cake. We're going to make it as a trifle or a tray cake that make it easier for you guys to carry on whether it's for your Christmas or for your birthday or for your office celebration all right so without further ado we're going to deep dive into the making of this black forest cake the recipe for today you can easily find through cookie do that can be accessible through your TM6 or you can access it through your iPad, your phone. All you need is just a free subscription to these thousands of recipes of a step-by-step -step to make a foolproof, delicious recipes for you and your, for your family. So the first thing that we're going to do is the chocolate sponge cake, okay? So now, very straightforward and very easy. You have all the dry ingredients. Let's give it a bit of a mix. I have water with vanilla over here so if you see the water is a little bit dark it's because of the vanilla pot that we use it's a really such a good investment if you can find real vanilla pot or real vanilla paste okay all right so we bring the water into a Varoma temperature so what is Varoma basically one of the features that Thermomix has is steaming feature so if you would like to steam let's say your dim sim or you want to steam some buns or your pudding so you just put some water into that set up your time put it on Varoma take it off the Thermomix comes with a basket attachment and you can put at the top and just put whatever you want to steam there and the steam that comes up from this hole is going to steam and cook the entire thing it's just one of the coolest things that you can get with the Thermomix TM6 the next step is to lightly whisk your egg yolks with oil this recipe is not only dairy free but it is also gluten free the recipe comes and calls for a regular plain flour so i took a liberty here and replacing it with your regular gluten free flour that you can find in any supermarket aisle the result is exactly the same if anything is actually fluffier So everything is already well incorporated so what you get is this really shiny and silky cake batter I use double the recipe of what you find online in cookie do and this my tray is around 60 times 40 centimeter so just bear in mind if you're doing one recipe you're gonna get half of the yield of what I have over here And now all you gotta do is just to bake it around 170 degree, 180 degree, depending on how hot your oven is. My oven is quite hot, so I'm gonna bake it at 170 degree. If you're baking it in quite deep dish tin, maybe you wanna bake it around 25 minutes to 30 minutes. But since I'm aiming for a thin layer for my trifle, I'm just gonna cook it for around 17 to 20 minutes. So it's always important for you to check if they have cooked thoroughly have your toothpick ready and then make sure that you rotate them in the middle if you need to if your oven is a little bit temperament okay so the next step just like any trifle you would need to have jelly right so just like that the black forest jelly will we're going to create a cherry jelly in the middle so what you want is a cherry jelly that is not too firm but just 
thick enough so when you are cutting it it's just giving you sort of like a self saucing sauce for your trifle so what i have here is sort of a make ahead of frozen pitted cherries with syrup so macerated cherries or you can have a little bit of a cheat and go to your gourmet the gourmet supermarket and go for those already macerated cherries in liquor okay so i put a little bit of kirsch liquor in here syrup and cherry leave it overnight and you have your macerated cherry so also over here what i have is five grams of blue gelatin the ratio is around one to 40. so you're looking around 200 grams of cherries here that you are going to turn into a cherry jelly so you're going to blitz them around 50 degrees enough four minutes them in because we already macerated in sugar i'm not going to add on any more sugar i'm just going to use this to blitz it Right. So once you're done, all you gotta do is just to strain it. If you like to have that cherry bites in it, you can just keep it as is. I'm going to strain it so I can have a really silky smooth sort of jelly layer for my trifle. Take your gelatin. Squeeze it really dry. Okay, and you just have to place it into a jug, a little jug. And set it aside to cool down. All right, and the next component is whipped cream. It's very easy, it's very simple, but there are a few tips and tricks to make it better to make it quicker for you first of all is that make sure that you have a completely cold bowl so for example if you put it into your dishwasher maybe pop in a little bit into your fridge or freezer to make sure that the bowl is cold not too long and that way you can have a very aerated whipped cream whipped cream doesn't really survive well with heat so it's just make sure that it's cold the second one is the choice of cream that you use for whipped cream in a supermarket aisle you have pouring cream and you have whipped cream Pouring cream, usually they use it for cooking, where, whereby they don't add any thickener in it. Or you want to make cakes, or you want to make ganache, or you want to decorate your cake. Always try to find thickened cream, yeah? And when you're wanting to make a Chantilly cream or a whipped cream, the best rule of thumb is to use 10% of the desired weight for sugar. So for example, here I have around 400 grams of thickened cream. I have 40 grams of sugar and I put some vanilla paste in it. Yeah, this is the butterfly attachment that you need to make your meringue or you need to make your whipped cream. Just insert it quickly. Cream next. Okay, I like to do mine to be whipped steady, not on a high sort of speed. So just choose around speed three and always keep an eye on your whipped cream inside if you whip it too much it's just going to separate and you have a butter so just make sure that you have the consistency that you desire so a lot of people think okay so what would be the best consistency for whipped cream when you're making whipped cream for just a straight degustation just to eat or you want to make it into your mousse the best is to think of it of a shaving cream consistency yeah, the moment you get there, that's what we call it as soft pink. So that's what we want. All right, so that's just around a minute for 400 grams of cream. And you got that. Yep, it's really silky, it's really properly aerated. And this is what you want for your trifle. All right, the next step is the chocolate shaving. So when you want to get a good chocolate shaving, all the one very important thing that you have to get is a, is a good chocolate. So what happened is when you get just a regular store-bought 
rather cheap chocolate. What happened is the majority of it is basically glucose. It's basically sugar and it's rather sticky. So when you mix it in your thermomix, instead of getting that really crumbly, crumbly, crunchy kind of texture, you're left with goop. So make sure you get what we call couverture. Um, you can get it different, different, different brands in your gourmet store. It's readily available everywhere. All right. So you need again cold bowl, dry, some pellets we call them, some drops, uh, some really good chocolate. Put it inside. All right. Here is one thing where it's quite peculiar. And on top of looking at your speed and the time, you also need to rely on your hearing to basically hear how fine this has been blitzed up, yeah? So I want you to do it together with me. On top of looking at the screen, listen, all right? So chocolate is basically fat. If you blitz it too long, you're going to make it into this goop, into this coagulated mass, yeah? So just do not mix it for too long. Do not mix it for too high. So put it in a blitz of around like five seconds and let's hear it together. Okay, stop over there. That's the first round. I'm gonna show it to you what you get. You get that. All right, so if you like to have this kind of a bit more brittle, a little bit more like a um, pebble, you can stop here, perfectly fine. I like mine to be a little bit finer, yeah? So we go a bit more. Again, listen, five seconds, run speed six to seven. You can tell from the noise that it's getting finer. Now, we have that. That second blitz. Right? Again, you can stop here. I still like mine. A five seconds, speed six or seven. And here we are, very fine pebble and that's what we're going to use to coat your trifle cake. Okay, all right, now we have all the components, let's assemble. All right, so we're going to assemble the trifle cake. I have my trusted glass container. So the purpose is that it's going to be so easy if you're going to close it like this and you're going to bring it to the park or you're going to bring it to your friend's house, your mom's house, your sister's house, you know, everybody's house, my house. So just basically get it ready. Uh, you can have your crystal bowl trifle, your trusted crystal bowl tri uh, uh, trifle bowl as well. This is the cake that we just baked just now. Look at how perfect it is. It's really nice, evenly raised up. Yep. So whenever I make a cake, a sponge cake, to be honest, any cake, I like to inject more flavor to it, right? So every time I make a lemon cake, I put lemon syrup in it. If I'm making lamington, for example, I will put a little bit of coconut cream into my sponge. And how do I do that? You can grab your fork, I have what I call the docker. You can use your fork and just prick your sponge. But since you know I'm doing a lot of this every day, this is what you get. So what it does is basically creating holes to absorb whatever flavor you want. In our case, the cherry jelly. So the cherry jelly component that we make just now and take some brush. Just make sure you, you ask your husband first or disinfect first. This is a pastry brush. This is actually, I get it from Bunnings and I always use it for this purpose. Okay, brush it. 
and the hole is going to make it easier for the cherry jelly to absorb it. I can guarantee you this just the off cut is going to be a fantastic snack. Okay. All right, so round, grab your vessel, just sort of gauge how big it is on the base. Top because mine is a, a little bit different from the top and the bottom. All right, first layer, cake in. Second layer will be this. Chantilly, start from the side, fill it out the middle. Line up your cherry. Start there, your cherry jelly. You can stop here, but I'm going to add another layer of cake. If you add it right now, it's just going to sink. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up and I'm going to leave it in a freezer for like around 20, 25 to 30 minutes. It's just going to be just enough to set for me to put my final layer of cake, another Chantilly cream, and then after that, the chocolate shaving. Now we can continue to our final layer. Right. Then take a bit of cocoa powder. And now, finally, I made a few different variations for your um, trifle. If you have a dinner party, this is going to be such an exceptional, impressive looking dessert uh, that you can pull out at the end of the meal. I added a bit more curves for this one because I think it's, if it's going to be in a martini glass, it has to have a strong alcohol in it. So, the leftover of your whipped cream. 